Hello everyone and welcome back to Snap Take. I'm back from vacation. This is the extremely rare Saturday video. We never do this, but the podcast is going to be delayed. And after last week's podcast was completely destroyed, I couldn't leave you without some brand new freaking decks, especially because we have one absolutely busted, wild, insane deck and another that I'm having more fun with than anything right now. So we've got to talk about that. Before we go further into that, though, I'd like to let you know that we're giving away 10 season passes currently. We're going to be giving away five more. We always give away 15. So we're giving away 10 season passes currently. All you have to do is be subbed, like, and comment. Commenting this very video is a season pass. And I'm going to tell you what, we're going to do one extra giveaway in the comments of this video. Stay tuned later in the video for that. Um, Any comment from yesterday's video, Friday's video, up to Tuesday's video, in the comments of every single video, as long as you're subbed, you'll be eligible to win a season pass from me. We're also giving away five passes on Twitter. So if you want to check out our Twitter, Snap JudgeCast, um, usually there's like a bajillion entries, but for whatever reason, uh, the Twitter algorithm has decided it doesn't like me this month. So there are far fewer than usual. So you have a really great chance at winning if you go check out the Twitter giveaway. As always, more to come. Our first deck is Owie's C5 Miracle. The second I saw the Rocker Raccoon change, this is the deck I thought of. We talked about it on the podcast that was lost, but this is basically abusing Black Swan to say, okay, so if I've got Cerebro out and I've got Black Swan out, right, that's uh, five, that's, sorry, seven, 14, 21, 28 free power on the last turn from Titania, Martyr, Rocket, and Ant-Man. Um, if I can get that 28 free power with Doom, who's 21, that's just completely stupid, bonkers power. I can also end up playing Cerebro and Spider-Man, for, or Cerebro and Polaris at the last turn for slightly less power, but it's completely sick. There's a number of fives that you can fit into this deck in various ways. Enchantress is not super important. Captain Marvel is great, but you can replace that with other cards. Um, you're filling up a lot of the board here, so sometimes she's amazing, sometimes she's sort of mid, but you've got a lot of ways to... Um, Sorry, Miles Morales is the real easy change, but you've got a lot of ways. All you really, really need as far as high series stuff goes is Black Swan. Um, Black Swan is like the whole deck, though, so you really do need to have Black Swan. So hopefully you do. Martyr is big, but you can try Lizard or Miles Morales in that spot without losing too much. Lizard makes a lot of sense because Enchantress can take away Lizard's downside. And Miles Morales makes a lot of sense because Polaris and Spider-Man move. And as long as Polaris and Spider-Man move, you've got a 1-5, which becomes a 1-7 like all the other ones. All right, so Aoi is currently sitting in the top 10 of the Marvel Snap Infinite leaderboards. Before we go further, Aoi Marvel Snap, he's a French player, absolutely really kind person that I interact with a fair amount. Really enjoy Aoi's content and Aoi's decks. Top 10 player in Marvel Snap right now. This is how you play this deck. Turn one, you pass. Turn two, you Medusa, obviously mid, um, assuming the locations allow you to. Bad locations will cause you to run with this deck, but hey, it's a Cerebro deck. You just sort of deal with it. Turn three, Celebro. Uh, Celebro? Cerebro is better than Polaris or Spidey once you know what they're playing at the very least. You do have to be wary of Rogue and Enchantress, but they're not common in the meta anymore, so you're not, like, dead to them. Then you have a um, Captain Marvel or Enchantress on turn four. If you have a really good Enchantress target, this is probably your best chance to use it, so feel free to go to town. Um, Captain Marvel 2 is really strong here because, well, 4-7 that flies wherever to win you the game is pretty nice. Uh, turn five, if you didn't play Medusa on two, you play Black Swan and Medusa now. And then turn six is all the ones in Doom, or all the ones and Cere- or um, Cerebro and Spidey or Polaris. And then you win because you just dropped like a 50 power last turn. It's a wildly powerful and interesting and fun deck, and I strongly, strongly, strongly urge you to try it out. This is not the one that I'm completely in love with. I'm saving that deck for last. Cool? All right, one last look at it. Remember that the goal is to play Black Swan on turn five, and then have a bunch of one fives to win the game. Um, You should be able to throw priority fairly easily, so be wary of Eliath, but that's the only thing that can really threaten you here. You can beat Enchantress and Rogue decks. You save Cerebro to turn six to play with that Spider-Man or Polaris, along with all your ones. Um, Just be wary of throwing priority again. Please hit that sub button, hit that like, hit that comment. Watch as long as you can. We bring you the best Marvel Snap content every single day. We cover everything from deck guides to bundles to OTAs and patches. Everything you need for your Marvel Snap journey is here. We get exclusive top ranked decks all the freaking time. The best players of Marvel Snap watch, learn, and send their decks to us. So please participate, join. We'd really, really appreciate it. We are also giving away some PAX codes. We are looking for uh, 
Cotton X. Cotton X, you won. Email us at snapjudgmentspodcast at gmail. Uh, you have until tomorrow. At the end of tomorrow, I'm going to restart the giveaway. So make sure you uh, send that email by tomorrow night. Um, we're also going to give one PAX code away to all Snap Judgments League members. We just did a huge tournament. We're hitting the top eight. Tomorrow's video will be some gameplay from the final round of Swiss. Um, so we're hitting the top eight. So anyone who played all four of their games or like one because the opponent didn't answer, I'm not going to penalize you if you didn't play the game because your opponent didn't answer. Um, you are entered to win that PAX code. We will be doing that as soon as this round wraps up, which it did technically last night. But like, hey, I'm recording a little earlier than this goes live, obviously, right? And then anyone on the $10 Patreon, patreon.com slash snap judgments, I'm going to make a post there. If you comment on that post, you're entered to win. After a day or two, I'll run a random number generator. So one of those people. And then we're going to give away one more. We have one more PAX code that I'm giving away. I haven't decided how I'm going to do that yet. Problem is, I want to give it away like 50 different ways, but it will in by like Monday's video. I'll have a good handle on what the hell I'm doing with that. Cool. All right. Questions of the day. Stefan Ransom asked the best and worst emote along with emote etiquette. So I um, only like my fancy emotes because I'm a hipster. I like my Iceman, I like my Cyclops, and I like my uh, Cosmo. Two of those are from hips, and one of those is just they gave it to us, and I love Cyclops. So those are the only ones I really use besides the Spider-Man point when we play the same damn card. Um, I'll occasionally give the fist bump. This one gives the fist bump out of politeness. I never use Ms. Marvel, and I basically mute anyone immediately who does. I think the best emote is probably, it's a toss-up between the Cosmo and the Cyclops. I don't think the Cyclops means anything yet, which is why I kind of like it. It's just kind of eager and silly, and like it makes me smile, and Cosmo is a good dog. Seamus, hey Seamus, asks what deck is easy to pick up and hard to master, and that Phoenix Force deck we talked about yesterday is the ultimate example of this. It is really, really, really easy to um, pick up a Phoenix Force deck and go, I need this combo, I play for this combo, but it's got 10 million things to do beyond that that make it an incredibly difficult deck to play and play at a high win rate. Thanos is also, like, look, anyone can win with Thanos, any idiot can win with Thanos, no offense to any idiots watching, but uh, Thanos is very, very easy to win with. However, if you watch really, really top-level Thanos players, they are doing a thousand things that you would never think of, unless you um, are a very high-level player. Keretix Lee wants to know my thoughts on audiobook versus physically reading a book for students. Uh, reminder, I'm a teacher, I teach high school English, I largely teach language courses, not literature courses, but... Um, Language courses being like AP Lang, not like I'm teaching English as a language. Um, so I'm teaching rhetoric fundamentally. Um, physically reading in an audiobook activate different parts of the brain. I generally speaking prefer students to physically read. Any standardized tests mean they're going to have to physically read um, unless they have special accommodations for otherwise. So I prefer physically reading, but Sometimes it's a choice of physically reading or it not getting done, and I'd prefer an audiobook to not getting done. Testing isn't everything. Sometimes it's better just read and get the content and be able to do the work and improve that way than otherwise. I don't think it's worth a fight, and as far as adults go, do whatever the hell makes you happy. The only reason I care for kids at all is a lot of my courses lead to money for college, and I don't work in a wealthy district, so that money for college can technically be life-changing for a number of kids. So by physically reading, they're training their brain to better physically read on days of major tests, which means they're more likely to score well, which just benefits them and their families. But outside of that, I think fundamentally, I'm not in the habit of gatekeeping such things. Green Goblin wants to know my favorite shirt, uh, specifically my favorite t-shirt, and I have a Kermit the Frog shirt that I love. My go-to karaoke song is The Rainbow Connection. I know, but it is. So um, I really love the Kermit shirt, largely because whenever I wear it, little kids get really happy. They see Kermit, it's like just a giant, like it's bar got barely any graphic on it. The shirt is Kermit's face. It makes me very happy to wear, and it makes me very happy the reaction it gets. There's other shirts I like more that are like real life shirts, but that's my favorite like silly graphic tee. If you'd like your question right out in tomorrow's video, please leave one in the comments. Tomorrow's video, again, will be Snap Judgments League gameplay. All right. Uh, Owl God is back in Marvel Snap. Korean player. Absolutely brilliant deck builder. Um, anytime you see Silky Smooth or any similar deck, Lambie made the best version, but Owl God put the idea in everyone's head by winning major tournaments, playing Move when everyone thought Move was bad and unplayable. Cool. Owl God left Snap for a while, getting frustrated with card acquisition and the meta and came back recently and hit infinite obviously very quickly as a high rank player it's not hard to hit infinite when you come back because basically you end up farming the crap out of bots so i always started out um at like 
for uh 40 uh 3000 and ends up around rank 300 with this freaking deck which is stellar i've been playing the crap out of this and i love it it's not my favorite deck that's still the last deck that we'll be getting to um by the way that second giveaway i said was coming is coming in like 30 freaking seconds so just chill cool so we've got um wasp sunspot kitty misty as like this little package um sunspot and misty work as a package and wasp and kitty work as a package wasp and kitty work as a hope summers package and sunspot and misty work as a power gaining she hulk package you can gain enough power that way and along with cyclops to basically guarantee yourself a win um this used to run professor x but eventually cut professor x just to be like i don't need it i'm just gonna put more power down uh it's using cannibal the exact way i said told everyone it would be used by the way like, all right, I told people I don't think they should buy Cannonball last week, and now Cannonball's in, like, a ton of the best decks already. I said eventually it was going to be. I knew Cannonball was going to be great. It was my, I thought it was going to be the best card of the season. It's not. Hope and Mockingbird are insane, but Cannonball is at least as good as War Machine. The card is excellent. I'm so happy that I wasn't completely wrong. It's good to not feel insane about when you think something's good, right? All right, so youtube.com slash owl at owl dog. Please do me a favor and go hit that sub button. Um, I'm aware the content isn't in everyone here's native language, but owl dog is owl god, owl dog, pick one, goes by both, is a phenomenal player, really kind person who's always been really nice to me, and is trying to hit 500 subs. Like, this is one of the best players in Marvel Snap, should be at 500 subs. Go show some love. Um, so in 19 hours, over three days, this went 233 and 130 for a 64% win rate, which is huge. Cannonball is the sauce here. I don't think this is remotely the same deck without Cannonball, but you can try Vision. You can try Arrow. I'd probably try Arrow over Vision, but whatever. You can try a big five. You need Evo and Kitty. Um, Kitty is relatively easy to get. If you've been playing long enough, they just gave you Kitty. She has a series four card, so you can get her. Evo is generally my suggestion for the first series five card to buy with tokens when you have enough, because Evo in and of himself is a deck. Jeff can be Nightcrawler and get Hope Summers, and that's where this giveaway just came up. All you have to do is reply something re relating to Hope Summers. And on Monday's video, Sunday's video? Uh, it's going to have to be Monday's video, right? Monday's video, I'm going to announce a winner. I'm going to give one more person Hope Summers because y'all freaking need Hope Summers. This card is too good. You're going to be behind the meta if you don't get it. Buy damn Hope Summers, and I'm going to give away one more of that card. Cool? So all you have to do is mention something regarding Hope Summers. You can literally say oh, something, something, Hope Summers. Don't care. You say get Hope Summers. Don't care. And I'm going to give somebody who comments one of those Hope Summers at random. Cool? The rest of you buy the card. All right. So from 43,000 to 363. That's completely insane. That's insanely um, efficient. Marvel Snap with like a 0.9 cube rate playing real players post-infinite. Just huge. All right, turn one, Sunspot, Kitty, and Misty. Um, what order you play them in is complicated. If you're trying to get priority to play armor, you'll often play Misty first. Um, if you've got just Kitty and Misty, play Kitty first, then Kitty Misty. Um, I guess it works the same way at any rate whether you go Kitty Misty or Misty Kitty. I guess it depends if you have Hulk in hand, right? You can um, drop Misty and then drop Kitty, and then Misty's going to give Kitty that extra power and pump up your Hulk if you've got that Hulk in hand. Um, Sunspot is if you already know you're going to do She-Hulk shenanigans. You want to make sure you get that Sunspot down, because if you're going to skip turn five, a uh, getting the extra six, sorry, five power out of that on Sunspot is humongous. Turn two is two ones or armor, and we already talked about when you would not play, when you would just play Kitty with Misty out. Um... You only really focus on armor, or I only really focus on armor personally, if my opponent is playing um, Destroy, if I can see like a Deadpool, or if I see like an X-23, I'm dropping armor like Hotness, if not, eh. But also Destroy is everywhere, because KM made a video about how great Destroy is right now, so like, you know, decent amount of armor, and those are generally better than Jeff. Jeff is a hope card here. Hope on um, three, sometimes you're going to Wasp, so you can play Cyclops and Kitty next, and not lose your Cyclops bonus. But generally speaking, just hope is better than Cyclops. And turn four, Cyclops on hope. And if you have the extra energy, Jeff, Kitty, Wasp on hope make sense as well. So if you can go, um, generally speaking, like the perfect play is Cyclops into Wasp, Hope, and Kitty, which is just like the sauce, fantastic, amazing play. And then you can just play like Hulk, She-Hulk, shenanigans next turn. You can, um, and you're great. Turn five is passive She-Hulk. If not, you play Cannonball plus whatever else you can. Um... 
And then turn six is She-Hulk and Hulk, or She-Hulk and Cannonball. And it's worth noting that even if you don't see Hope Summers, you can do the She-Hulk and Cannonball end game play. One last look, this deck is a thing of beauty. Please, if you have access to these cards, play it. And this is about as easy to play high level deck as you're gonna get, because again, Jeff is totally replaceable. Hopefully Kitty is cheap, and hopefully you just have Evo and you can buy Hope. Cool. All right, uh, I never talk about this anymore, but like, hey, the Patreon exists and you should subscribe. So patreon.com slash snap judgments, the $1 tier, show love tier, that is basically just, I occasionally throw free stuff on there, but it's basically just to show some extra support. It ends up being like 50 cents, oh, no, God, less than that. Like, the amount you pay per video is like a penny, something completely stupid. Someone did the math. Someone do the math in the comments so I can sell this better. But you also get access to our tournaments. Um, we're hosting a major tournament next month. We hosted Snap Judgments League in March, and we're hosting another Snap Judgments League in May, so you can get access to this tournament where you get to play with some of the best players of Marvel Snap in this huge tournament, um, and we're making it so much better for next month after our first run. You don't want to miss out on that. The $5 tier is the peace tier. It gets access to early access to videos, content suggestions. You get to ask questions um, for priority answers, podcast guest questions, and complete post-archive. The $10 Peace and Love tier is a once a month exclusive podcast, exclusive content, both written and video. There is a, um, whatchamacallit, a free video I do once a week, usually exclusively for the Peace and Love tier. This one week, because I was away, I released it to everyone, so you can try that out if you're on even the $1 tier. Um, there's an exclusive giveaway once a month, hence the PAX code that's going there. Um, we've got question and answer mailbags, end of daily video shoutouts, priority questions for podcast guests plus all previous tiers. So hopefully you're interested in checking that out. Hopefully you find this content worth supporting if you've been watching this long. Again, we do one of these every freaking day, seven days a week, constant Marvel Snap content here on the channel. At least like 20 to 25 minutes worth of video. Sometimes when we do a podcast, like two plus hours worth of content. All right. Gregor2424 has this Toxic Surfer build. This is the one I've been telling you I had so much fun with. I cleared an infinity ticket from Silver with this in like no time if your opponent cannot answer you you're putting 40 power in multiple lanes on the regular there is a lot to like about this deck it looks like a hazmat deck it's not it's a surfer deck that occasionally can win with hazmat although let me just tell you i won a lane where opponent had a bunch of cards 50 to zero and that felt pretty good thanks to hazmat all right, so um, you can find gameplay from this at youtube.com slash at gregor2424 gregor's one of our friends will be on the podcast soon i hope so Check out Gregor's gameplay. Go check out Gregor's content, please. This has won multiple Infinity Boards. Got me an Infinity Ticket. People are rocking face with this. This is like a must-need-to-know deck because it is slowly taking over the meta. You're going to see a lot of this. The less answers to magic you see, the better this is. Shaw is the only high series card here. Shaw is incredible in this list, but Polaris and Rogue work just fine. Um, Rogue gives you an extra answer to bullshit your opponent does, and Polaris is just a reasonably sized card. All right, so... Turn one and two are pass, you do nothing. Turn three is brood, Luke or magic. Um, if I know my opponent doesn't have an answer, I just want to get magic down as soon as possible so I can make better decisions later. And Luke can be countered, and brood takes up a lot of board space. So I'd really like it to be magic, but whatever. Turn four, you can abs on brood if you think you're stuck playing a regular game. If not, you'll wong. And if you don't do either of those, then you play Luke, magic, or brood. Cool. Turn five, if you played magic, you can Mystique on that Wong. If not, just play Sarah. Generally speaking, you would really prefer Sarah. Mystique is not there for the Wong. Mystique is there for the Sarah. Got it? Um, if you played Sarah on five, you can then go Mystique on Sarah plus another two threes. Surfer, Ironheart, and Luke all make sense. So do the earlier plays. And then you can combo Odin, Hazman, Hazmat, Absman, Odin, Surfer, Absman on Wong and just dominate. Um... Ironheart is phenomenal here as just sort of like an extra surfer, like a mini surfer here. Um, there's just a lot to like. You put an absolute ton of power on the board. Again, you're putting like 38, 40 power, multiple lanes. I um, just rolled infinite decks with this with relative ease. It's really, really strong. It's got a lot to like. It is not hard to play. It's not easy to play, right? This isn't brain dead, but it's not hard to play. I strongly urge you to check this deck out. I think you're really, really going to like it. Certain tiers of support, as mentioned, come with on-air Patreon thanks. We've got Abigail Giesler, Meditator Burnout, Cables, hope you're doing well in your travel, bud. David G. Wingfield, Direwolf, LAB, Fathor Newman, go check him out on YouTube too. Good Dog Gamer, great deck builder player, 
Inc., Jay Never Eight, JJ McDonald, who's back to streaming. Check him out. Caretix Lee, Koi Ray, KCH, Doku, Philip Rakovich, who's got a deck we're featuring soon. Haplo, Kenny Loggins, Living in the Danger Zone, Rob Silverman, Juan Diego Labed, The Biza, J Bussy, X Force V, Skippy G, Tommy Nyquist, Black Dahlia, Jessica Campbell, Ryan Wood. Welcome to the club, Ryan Wood. Models, Lou Anton as my former student. Models is our mod, by the way, in the SJL. Runs everything. Matt H., Mikey Hijinks, No Flex, Ocularis, Craig Sterry. Welcome to the group, Craig. Pretty Chill, awesome person. Seamus, we just answered a question from. Spike Jones, told you we'd be back in full force. Two Ties, The Pirate King, Tucker, Monday night. I'm on Tucker's stream talking new season, new cards. The homie Min, Rito in disguise on Twitch. You don't want to miss him. And of course, as always, Snap Tactics himself, the tournament master, Gunny T, where the T is not for tournaments, but it damn well should be. All right. I really enjoyed making this video. I miss doing these. That's kind of the other reason we did them. Um, tomorrow's video will be um, Snap Judgments League, like King of Swiss games as best we can. After that, it will be um, Monday. I think I got some sweet Italian lists. Um, they're doing their still round robin tournament, so I'm going to cover like the lists that are winning in that, uh, assuming that we get them and on time. If not, it'll be a regular video. Tuesday, we've got the giant freaking new season thing. Somewhere in there, we're going to release a podcast. I don't even know who the guest is, um, but Roy and I are recording tomorrow. A nice quick podcast for you. And you can check us out on Patreon at patreon.com slash snapjudgments. If you made it this far, hit that sub, hit that like, hit that comment. Help us grow. We're almost at 10K. We appreciate and love y'all. See you tomorrow for some more Snap Take with Yeti. Peace.